When it comes to DaVinci Resolve on the iPad, I actually think that there's one feature missing. And in this video, I wanna talk about this and maybe what will change in the future if we get that one feature. So let me walk you through my setup. These are my two iPads. This is my M1 11 inch iPad Pro that I got in 2001. And most of the videos that you see here on this YouTube channel about DaVinci Resolve on the iPad, and even the masterclass videos, because I have a masterclass about DaVinci Resolve on the iPad from beginner to pro, are mostly done on that setup. So my newer device is this one here, the iPad Mini 7. I have a separate video just about the iPad Mini 7 and how well DaVinci Resolve actually works, even on the iPad Mini 7. So I will link this one up here, but one thing I never really talked about in all of the years now with DaVinci Resolve on the iPad is more focused on touch. Let me explain. This setup, I use it like this. I use the touch interface. I use the Apple Pencil because I really think that there's a couple of features in DaVinci Resolve that even make more sense having a pencil. For example, if you go to the color tab and you do all of your color grading and everything, that is so much more fun to actually use on a touch screen. But then to be faster, I actually use a Bluetooth keyboard. That's the magic keyboard from Apple. And I also use a folio here on top. That's an editor keys folio that exists for Final Cut Pro and also for DaVinci Resolve. I will link that one here in the description below. And the main reason why I use this setup, which is now a little bit more like a desktop, is because DaVinci Resolve is kind of the same software like on the desktop. Everything you can do on the desktop, you can do here on the iPad as well. That means because it's so optimized for desktop, it just makes more sense to use a keyboard and to be faster. And for example, I've never done a comparison video about Final Cut Pro on the iPad and DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. One reason is because I see both softwares a little bit different. One software is the desktop software where we can do everything. That's DaVinci Resolve, of course. And then the other software is actually more optimized for touch. Because if I actually go here into Final Cut Pro, but this video is not about now the comparison, but I just wanna show you Final Cut Pro is more optimized. You, don't, you can have a keyboard, but you don't need a keyboard. You can do everything here. And something that I now noticed with Final Cut Pro, they didn't have that from the beginning, is you can swap it around and if you just use the touch, you can actually now use the touch just here in Final Cut Pro. And if I close my media pool here, and I open here, for example, the jog wheel, I have so much screen real estate because I can see my video and I can go through this. I think Final Cut Pro is so much better optimized for that. And that's something I never talked about. If you have the setup like this, of course it makes sense to have it like this, right? You see more from the real street, from your, from your screen, and that, that's the same for DaVinci Resolve. You see it, you work like this, like a desktop. But what if you wanna sit on the couch and have your iPad, and I mean, it works like this, you can use your iPad like this, right? You can, you can do it, but every time I swap this around and I have it like this, it just feels so much more natural. I think this is one of the greatest assets of actually having an iPad. And I wanna show you something. So if we come back here to DaVinci Resolve. So the first thing I wanted to show you, and I was hoping to figure this out, when we use DaVinci Resolve on any iPad, if we rotate it, we can actually see, even if we have this message now, with please set the iPad to landscape to continue using DaVinci Resolve. So Blackmagic wants us to use it like this. But in the background, we can actually see that we have our viewer, we have the media pool, that it's actually working. I guess they haven't really optimized the UI and I hope this is a change that will come in the future. Because, and for that I will now open here Final Cut Pro. Oh yeah, and by the way, this is something I wanted to figure out for the last like three weeks. I wanted to find a way to remove this overlay because DaVinci Resolve clearly works in the background. But anyway, the reason why I wanted to show you, if I now open here Final Cut Pro, on my iPad mini 7 and I I optimize my screen now like this is the maximum I can go with my viewer now that viewer is now bigger than on my bigger iPad so because if I make this one bigger here I will not see any of my timeline it just makes no sense to work so at least I have to have it like somewhere like this this is already like really limited. I only see like two or three lines. So normally what I would do is actually I work like this. So I have even a smaller window, right? And it doesn't matter if you work in the cut page or in the edit page. In the cut page, the viewer is a bit bigger, right? In the edit page, because there's more features, but I love to work in the edit page. So my viewer is smaller than if I now would work on an iPad mini 7. So imagine if I would have DaVinci Resolve and I could swap around like this, see my viewer, and see my timeline here, it would make so much more sense and even 
with an iPad mini. And I just wanted to highlight that because I never gave credit to Final Cut Pro and I even don't even have it in my masterclass about Final Cut Pro that you can actually work like this. But if you sit on an airplane, if you sit on your couch, you have this small device and you can go through your timeline like this. It just feels like the iPad is made for that. Even, and I want to give this disclosure, of course, if you use DaVinci Resolve with all the features, having a keyboard makes your way much faster. This is one of the reasons why I never compared that. Even if you have features like the jog wheel, you can edit fast, but I personally are always faster using shortcuts. So going through my timeline with shortcuts, making cuts is just so much faster. And then this setup makes more sense. You didn't want to rotate, but here comes the cool thing. If that already works on an iPad mini seven and makes my real estate and my screen so much bigger, imagine how it is with a bigger iPad. This is my 11 inch iPad, right? If I go now to Final Cut Pro and I rotate it like this, this is how much more screen I have using now the jog wheel this is amazing. I want DaVinci Resolve to be like this. Please, Blackmagic Design, if you're listening, and I hope you guys are working on this one already, because clearly in the background, it works. We have our viewer and everything. Just optimize that. And also these new features for vertical video. Vertical video would make more sense like this, because then we see something, because if you change that one here to vertical video, right? That means I even see less. I have to actually remove all of this down to see my vertical video, right? It just makes no sense. But what would make sense on the iPad, and maybe the iPad would be even better than the desktop, is to turn this around and now edit my videos on the go. And it could even be more fun than on a desktop to, for example, do all my shorts, my reels, and my TikToks. Hey, this is Daniel from the future. I made this video one day before the new update came out, version 20.1. We have a lot of features that's coming into version 20.1. The biggest one is the keyframe editor. So I made a video about that one. Definitely check that one out. But because I'm talking about vertical videos, we don't have that one yet, so we can't rotate it. But what I was talking about is now actually working on the iPad as well. So if you come to this icon here, I'm in the cut page. If I come to this icon, I can now go here to portrait mode, select this one, and this icon now works. So I can click this one. That changes now the UI of DaVinci Resolve. And now I have more real estate here with my timeline. Um, do I? Ah, something learned. So you have to do this before. So if you want to see more of your timeline before you select this one, this is the handle here in the cut page. So you have to make your timeline as, as big as you want. But now if you click this icon, your shorts video will be now shown here in like just more optimized as a UI. So you can edit shorts now on the iPad. You have your timeline here. You have your media pool here and everything that you open here in this window. And fun fact, someone in the comments mentioned that in my video yesterday. Now, when you change that to the shorts modus, you can now even come to the color page. And now we have a new arrangement here in the, in the color page and this button even works here in the color page. So if you now edit in the color page and you do your color grading for shorts, you have this mode. Uh, the funny thing is if you turn this one off and let's say for example, you return to landscape, this icon here is not there if you are in this modus right now. So if I come now to the color page, it is not here. I have to first change that either in the edit page or in the cut page to portrait. Does it now work even before? Yes. Now I see this icon here on top as well and I can even change it back to landscape, but now the icon is gone. That doesn't dilute from the idea of my video. I still think editing on an iPad for touch in this modus is so much more powerful, but at least we have now this new feature that we can edit shorts even in DaVinci Resolve. The biggest update is the curves and keyframe editor. So if you haven't seen that video yet, definitely check out the video here. Back to my old self. No hardcore solution in this video. I just wanted to know what you think about this. Let me know in the comments below. I think, especially now having the iPad mini seven in my hands with Final Cut Pro, this puts Final Cut Pro a little bit above DaVinci Resolve for convenience and editing on the go just with the touch screen. Of course, if you do not vertical videos, like most of my YouTube videos, and you have a setup like this, and you're okay with a smaller screen on an 11 inch, then you work like this and I will continue working like this. But I just wanted to let you know that I think this is amazing. So Blackmagic Design, please, on the iPad, give us vertical mode so that we can use the touch face interface. And I would probably use it more often in touch mode, just because I see more and I can edit more. It makes just more sense than like this.
Anyway, that's my little talk for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and let me know in the comments below what you think about this. Do you want something like this? Tell me how you use your iPad with DaVinci Resolve or Final Cut Pro. And if you never really picked up Final Cut Pro, I have a masterclass about Final Cut Pro too, so you can use it. And maybe for some projects, it just makes more sense to use Final Cut Pro, the smaller project, on a touch device. I'm Daniel. Welcome to my channel. And as you could tell from this video, on this channel, it's all about DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut Pro on the iPad. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.